As a data extraction expert, I have been using Selenium for years. It's my go-to library for scraping data from websites that need JavaScript or when I need to perform user interactions in a project such as filling out forms, clicking, typing, logging in and more. In this video, we are going to take a brief look at the uses of Selenium, create a real-world project where we extract different data points from a website and output it to a CSV file. Additionally, I will also share how you can extract data from almost any website without getting blocked as this is one of the biggest bottlenecks when extracting data. So without any further ado, let's get started. Although, I also want to quickly say that this is not a tutorial per se and we won't be dwelling on each line of code, but this will give you a fair understanding of how to approach a Selenium based project. You can slow it down a bit as well to follow along. So let's get started. First step, which is exploring the website. For this video, we will extract data from scrapethissite.com. I will link all the code and website link in the description. Once we reach the website, we will head to the sandbox and click on Oscar winning films, Ajax and JavaScript since this has the proper use case for demonstrating Selenium based web scraping. Now let's say you want to extract data from this specific website. You have been instructed to get each of the movie names shown by clicking each of the years. You also have to keep the nomination and award values for each of the movies and then store the complete data in a CSV file. So, how will you do this? First of all, while exploring the website, we see that we need to click on each of the years for the data to load. So, we need a library that supports user interactions. Selenium supports that, including other user interactions that we can do manually like typing, scrolling, taking screenshots and much more. Next, let's see if the web page needs JavaScript. We open inspect element, disable the JS by pressing Ctrl Shift P and then disable the JS. And what we see now is that we cannot view the data anymore. The years become unclickable. Fortunately, we know a library that supports user interactions and can also get data from JS based websites. You of course guessed it right, it's Selenium. So now, let's start creating the project. Coming to the Visual Studio Code Editor, let's install two libraries, Selenium and WebDriver Manager. We will install it with pip install selenium and webdriver manager. Webdriver manager because it installs the Chrome driver for Selenium automatically so that we do not need to hard code it ourselves in the code. Now let's start writing the code. First we create a python script. We import selenium. Then webdriver manager and the time library to allow the code to wait between each step. In webdriver manager, we specifically install import chrome webdriver manager. Then we create a webdriver object to which we will pass instructions. We create the initial script that goes to our target website and we run the script to see if it is fetching the page correctly. Great, we are able to go to the page. Now we need to locate each of the year elements. We can locate elements by either specifying XPath selectors or CSS selectors. In this video, we will locate them by creating XPaths. Since if you want to become a data extraction expert, you should know how to locate elements with XPaths. XPaths are more powerful than CSS selectors. So to locate elements, we open inspect element, find the year element and start creating the XPath for it. We see that it has a tag and class name year link in it and so the xpath comes to be double slash a square bracket at the rate class equals to year link. Let's use it in our code. To use it in our code, first of all we import the by method to be able to locate the elements through xpath. Then we create year elements equal to driver.findElements then by.xpath and then the xpath value that we just created. This will let selenium get all the year elements. We can now go through each of the elements and click them one by one and also add a time sleep of 3 seconds for it to wait some time between each of the clicks. 
Let's test it out. Great, it's able to click each of the year elements and reach the data as well. Now, as we located the year element, we will locate the movie title, nomination, and awards as well through the XPath. Again, we move to the inspect element. See that for movie title, since it's located in the TD tag and has the class name film title. Its XPath would be double slash TD at the rate class equals to film title. Similarly, for nominations, it would be double slash td at the rate class equal to film nomination. And for awards, it would be double slash td at the rate class equal to film awards. Great. Now that we have located all the elements, we can bring them all together and iterate through each of the title, nomination number and awards number and print them out. Since our XPath gets the element but we need just the text from each, we'll add the dot text method to the element. So let's test it out now. First, it goes to each web page, clicks on each of the years as expected. Then it gets the data and then it prints it in the proper order. Amazing, isn't it? Selenium is super powerful at this. Now, the final step, storing the collected data in a CSV file. For this, we can use a library called CSV. First, we import the CSV library. Then we create a data object and then we store all the data in that object by appending the collected data. Then we create a small script which creates a file named moviesdata.csv. And then create the first row as a header and set it to movie name, nominations and awards. Finally, we pass the data object to it as well. Now, let's run the script once again and wait for the program to collect all the data. And amazing, it has generated a CSV file named moviesdata.csv which contains all the data we needed. Now to answer the question, how do you get data from any website without getting blocked? There are so many steps you can take and I have also created a separate video on this topic which I will link here for you that you can check out after watching this video. But yeah, one of the best steps you can take is to use a web scraping API that handles the antibot bypass mechanism for you. We need something that will anti-block CAPTCHAs, Cloudflare, AKB Challenge and every antibot mechanism that exists out there. 
One such web scraping API which is the best in the market is getodata.com. You can simply log in to reach the API dashboard where you can create and test your request. In the upcoming videos, we will dive into more complex data extraction projects where we will extract data from large websites with complex data pages that require advanced antibot bypass mechanisms. So stay tuned for that. Thanks and have a great day.